Hey guys, welcome back. This is King Adu, and I'm here to bring you guys uh, part three of the analysis and overview of Basic Attention Token ICO. In the first video, we went over just an introduction of the concept. In the second video, we looked at the roadmap. In this video, we will be looking at the leadership team and taking a look at the allocation of funds. So, let's get right to it. If you haven't watched video one or two, this video will still be here when you get back, so go ahead and check those out. It should help you understand where we're picking up and where we're headed. Um, this is a four-part series, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Um, but let's get right to it. Just to kind of give you guys a quick, brief review of where we've already been, I wanted to read uh, a BAT overview from the white paper directly. So let's begin. The basic attention token was developed to address the broken digital advertising market. BAT, an ERC-20 token built on top of Ethereum, will be the unit of exchange in a new decentralized open source and efficient blockchain based digital advertising platform. Whew, that's a mouthful. In the ecosystem, advertisers will give publishers BATs based on the measured attention of users. Users will also receive some BATs for participating. They can donate them back to publishers or use them on the platform. This transparent system keeps user data private while delivering fewer but more relevant ads. Publishers experience less fraud while increasing their percentage of rewards. And advertisers get better reporting and performance. The first part of the solution, the Brave browser, is already operational. Brave is a fast, open source, privacy focused browser that blocks invasive ads and trackers and contains a ledger system that anonymously measures user attention aggregate to accordingly reward publishers. The next step is introducing BAT. Currently, we plan to utilize the Brave browser for BAT, but other developers are free to util utilize other browsers. Essentially, they're saying that Chrome potentially could use it if they wanted to. Brave is more than a browser. It defends your data on your devices and synchronizes your personal and private browsing profiles across devices using client-side encryption. Your data, studied and abstracted by on-device only machine learning, provides you with private and anonymous options to get compensated for your attention. Brave cuts out all third-party trackers and middle players, eliminating data leakage, malware risk, and excessive fee taking. Brave does this while providing publishers with a substantially larger revenue share than that that they are receiving in the existing inefficient and opaque marketplaces. Brave thus aims to reset the online ad-based web ecosystem, giving advertisers, publishers, and customers a win-win solution whose components and protocols can become future web standards. Awesome. So hopefully that gives you a quick... Uh, background and idea of if you haven't watched the first two videos in this series about what we're talking about we're talking about this ICO that's on May 31st 2017 for basic attention token there are two key critical factors in deciding if you want to invest the first one is the brave browser in and of itself this is the part of the equation that is required for success we are 100% dependent on the browser being adopted well before we ever worry about BAT, well before we ever worry about these tokens having any value whatsoever. So keep that in mind, that that should be the first thing you're thinking about. If, this, if you are already to the third video by now and you haven't gone and downloaded the Brave browser, just stop watching and go download it if you have any intention of investing. You need to use the browser and ask yourself, would I use this browser? If it's a better browser for you, you're more likely to tell somebody, you're more likely to share it, you're more likely to spread the good news. But if it doesn't work for you, do not invest. 
Simple as that, guys. If you're not a believer in it. Personally, I've used it. I have it on all my devices now. And I'm telling everyone I know about it. I've gotten a bunch of people at work excited about it. They think it's really cool. They're mostly sold on the ad blocking being built in. They really like the idea of how much faster it is. It's crazy fast um, on my Android device when I'm on mobile. Um, I can noticeably see the difference. I can. It's it's tangible. It's real. It's half the half the loading speed, right? So, um, or or time rather, half the loading time. So, go try the browser you have to if you're gonna spend any money on this don't just throw money at it because that is the critical element for success when it comes to BAT that being said let's go ahead and start talking about the leadership team the key members now the leadership team is extremely impressive um, I went ahead and got on LinkedIn looked up all of them made sure that everything looked legit made sure everything had a solid background um, what I will say is that I'm excited about the CEO, Brendan Eick. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, he's a co-founder of the Brave browser. He literally created JavaScript himself. Like he is the creator and founder of JavaScript. If you are not familiar with JavaScript, you're not a programmer, you may have heard that term, but it is a widely adopted, well-known language. Every IT guy that my work is hiring knows JavaScript. It's core now to know JavaScript when you're learning programming. So, that being said, this is the part that should interest you the most and give you some confidence in what this team is trying to do. He was a co-founder of Mozilla and Firefox. Now, if you're not old enough, you don't know, but those two browsers were wildly successful they were the alternative browsers to internet explorer um they were the the gateway to what we mostly use now most people use uh, chrome so wildly successful proven track record of doing innovative new technologies what he's not so good at is dominating and holding on to that leadership role that that um, trying to think of the right word but essentially being the premium category leader being you know uh, the premium browser he hasn't been able to produce one and hold its reign Chrome has been holding it for a pretty long time in the history of the internet but don't forget the history of the internet is really short so it's to it's we'll we'll have to wait and see but here's what we do know we know for a fact that the brave browser works you can go use it right now they have developed and launched it pretty cool right i wanted to take a look at some numbers to get an idea of the adoption rate and I was going to go over these numbers a little bit in the next video, but it plays into what we're talking about right now. And on the Android App Store, right now there's about 100,000 downloads. That kind of gives you an idea, but only an idea of how many people are downloading it. I went on to the iOS App Store, and they no longer show the number of downloads. Uh, if if one of my viewers knows how to get access to that information, please leave it in the comments to help everyone out with this evaluation. But I was not able to find that. When I go and I look at Alexa, there's Alexa.com, and it's an Amazon-owned company. Um, no relation to the Alexa you may talk to from time to time at home. But they report on the top trafficked sites they do some measurements and they report it right now the brave website is ranked 89,000th in the world which is a top 100,000 website that's pretty solid in traffic um, it's up 25,000 positions in the last three months that's a pretty solid lift, especially within that range, in my experience. It's rank in the United States 
is 45,000. So it's a top 50,000 website in the United States. Why is that important? Because it's an indicator of success. It's an indicator of are people going to this website, trying out this new technology? Is it being adopted? It's very critical. 30% of the traffic to the site is from the United States. There's about 4% from Canada, about 9% from China, 6% from India, and about 5% from the United Kingdom, and the rest is spread out across the world. So keep that in mind as well. Um, right now it seems like it's being adopted I mean, the correlation between where the majority of the processing power and access to internet and computers, things like that, it's a direct correlation. So there's nothing there that really stands out to me personally, uh, but it is something that I went ahead and took a look at just for you guys. Um, I also wanted to take a look at what people are searching for. I think it's a critical indicator based on people people's search behavior on the internet um, to be able to determine what what intent did they have uh, before they came to the site? And here are the top five, um, which is which is kind of funny, actually. You might giggle on this, but the first one is Brave Browser. So people knew that they wanted to find the Brave Browser. 33% of the traffic, people to typed in Brave Browser. Um, after that, just the word Brave. Pretty cool, right? Um, you would think people are trying to find the definition or something like that, but 30% of the traffic comes from just that. So it's already doing a good job of kind of branding itself. Um, and uh, so that's a good indicator. I really, really do like the name um, from a marketing perspective. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a professional digital marketer. I study marketing. I work with premium brands and retailers. Um, and uh, products and services. So I really like the choice of the name. They clearly made a large investment to own that. And I think it works out really, really well. I'm a big fan of their marketing, the positioning of the company and the way that they're, they're trying to be innovative without being like a rebel. You know, Firefox and Mozilla was a very rebellious feeling back in the day you were such a rebel uh, you know downloading a new browser um, not using Internet Explorer right so um, just some just uh, you know my two cents on that about how I feel about brave back to the keywords number three is brave web browser so again the same thing but number four this is exciting number four is brave browser download um, now, unfortunately, it's a small percentage that's literally looking for the download, but it's but it's still an indicator. It's something to track. All of those numbers are something to keep an eye on. So I'll be monitoring that as we get closer to it, and even after, because um, maybe maybe there's opportunities to invest later on as well. And these are key indicators. Um, you can also oh number five, sorry number five was Brave Movie. And um, anyhow, I think people are looking for Braveheart, but you know, hopefully they found a good browser there. I just think that's silly that they ended up here. Um, I'm looking at um, the traffic for the browser. Um, it's basically right now at a second all-time high. Back in October, um, it peaked, um, but it's a very steady, very, very steady acceleration upward. Um, and it looks very promising. Um, as we get closer to the ICO, I expect it to hit an all-time high because I expect people to actually try the browser because, again, that's all that matters. If everyone is using the browser, BAT is going to go through the roof. It's going to be one of the best investments you ever made. It would be like, it would be like placing a bet on Google Chrome, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago right um you'd be winning at life right now so just just something to think about that that's part of the bet that you're making here is is this browser going to potentially take a significant market share away from the other browsers even if this browser became the rebellious browser and it wasn't widely adopted 
um, even that's a big win. That would be a significant win for everyone. So just something to keep in mind um, when we're looking at these numbers. Um, the majority of people are coming from Google when they're searching to get here. Um, after that, it's like YouTube and GitHub. So um, hopefully some of you guys will add to those numbers as you leave YouTube to go download it. Um, but one thing I wanted to point out that is a critical element of success is total sites linking into Brave, okay? So right now there's only 151. It's kind of low, but hopefully we can see more. Um, however, some of the ones that are doing it are like Bloomberg.com, and uh, you know that's a good indicator. Uh, we've got some big publications that are sharing the news about Brave, um, and that's what needs to happen, some good PR. So just something to keep in mind, guys. Um, so those are the numbers on the Brave browser. Uh, and a little bit more on the leadership team I want to share with you as far as Brendan Enoch goes. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you my opinion now, okay? So he created JavaScript, co-founder Mozilla and Firefox. But my opinion is, is, you know, I go and I look at his LinkedIn and I really think about what would it be like to be him and what's his intent with what he's doing here on this ICO. And the truth is, in my opinion, so it's not the truth, but it's strictly my opinion, is that um, this dude's already super wealthy. He, he, there is no intent to scam or take money. I just don't see it. His reputation and his, how well known he is. He's, he's going to be in a history book somewhere of some kind. Um, so why would he do that, right? Um, he's left quite a mark on people's lives, even though you've probably never heard of him before. Um, I'm willing to bet more than half of all of us have used uh, one of his browsers at some point in our lives and I can guarantee you that if you're watching this right now you have been touched and affected by JavaScript in your life guaranteed somewhere on your screen right now there's probably some JavaScript happening so <laughs> pretty cool right so I don't think he has any ill intent or um, he's trying to scam anybody um, the lead developer I looked into and tried to learn as much as I could because I think that that's really important. That it's uh, trying to understand who's actually building the technology, right? It's one thing to lead, um, a lead a team and be a good leader, and and I think Brendan can do that. But but then we get into the actual minutia of like, can you even build it? You know, um, and it's it's re it remains to be seen. We do have proof of. A best-in-class browser if you go and you use the brave browser you will see that it is a best-in-class browser it is great it works it is fast it does what it says it does um, so it gives me more confidence in the team however we are working with a brand new technology um, I was watching an interview on cryptos channel today um, for a second time and the second time I, I watched this interview I, I kind of giggled and started realizing that there was a statement said about people who actually write in the language of solidity anyone who is an expert or fluent is a multimillionaire. all of them and i know that's a really like strong statement but you've got to understand that the technology um is what two years old what does it take to become proficient or an expert in something you're going to have to pour a ton of time into it, right? Well, all the people who were pouring a crap ton of time into it early on, um, they were, you know, working with Ethereum back when it was a dollar or less. Back when it was maybe 30 cents. Um, all of those guys that invested in this, a lot of them may have gotten paid in Ethereum, right? Just like Vitalik's got his team being paid in Ethereum, things like that. They're all millionaires. <laughs> There aren't very many people who are fluent in this technology in any type of blockchain application. It's all cutting edge, innovative. So really for me, I question, every, you know, when I look at the developers, I want to see that they have something that's connected. I wasn't able to make that connection here, um, but I don't think you're going to make that connection anywhere because you're, you're not really going to find too many people who are fluent. 
So just something to keep in mind, guys, um, with any ICO. You know, take that with you for the next six months. You know, in two or three years, you can try to, like, demand that, you know, someone leading the project that was successful on another one. But, man, even still, the people who are fluent in this stuff that are doing these projects, they're making lots of money. And they're going to make lots of money because they're doing cutting-edge technology in an industry that is exploding as as we sit here and just watch right um so keep that in mind so that's a quick overview on the on the uh, key team members and kind of what i saw and my takeaways um the next thing i wanted to do really really quickly so i can let you guys go is the budget allocation and i'm just going to read through what they plan on spending the money on now they're going to be raising um about 15 million dollars um, that's the maximum. They're, they're, they're definitely going to cut it off. Um, now, they, they set a minimum of $4 million, but I have no doubts that they're going to get the full $15 million. That's going to be 175000 Ether, and we'll get more on that into the next video. But um, where's that money going? 58% of the budget is going to go to um, their engineers. They have about um, 20 to 30 engineers. And uh, the money's going to go to help pay those guys. We need these guys to get paid, and that's important, um, and that makes sense. Administration, 10%. Marketing, 12%. Contractors, 13%. And contingency, 7%, which is just basically, you know, miscellaneous unknown costs. Now, when I look at this breakdown, um, it makes sense to me. I run a digital marketing department, um, and so I only bring that perspective to the table. Um, so I'm not going to say I'm any kind of expert here, but what I do know is that if you're based on um, the type of technology that they're expecting their engineers to do, the um, you know it's it's it, they already have a best-in-class browser that they have to support, but now they're going to layer it with this BAT token they have to pay these guys pretty well because they're crazy smart and the opportunity is to jump ship and go to another ethereum blockchain opportunity or maybe like a nem opportunity where you just need to know javascript you don't have to learn a new language there's so many opportunities right now in blockchain you're going to want to pay your guys well and when i look at the 58 percent of the budget going to uh, the core team um, that actually makes sense to me when you start adding up the numbers and how much you're gonna have to pay each guy uh, per year um, so it'll be interesting they don't state how long they plan this money to, uh, to fund them going forward um, but um, the way I see it is this we have a leader that doesn't look like he wants to screw us over and steal our money and we also have a reasonable amount of money not a, a crazy amount um, and so I feel good about it. It's like it's it's just enough money to keep them going for about a year to two years. Um, and I think that's great. If they're wildly successful and they need to hire more people and do more marketing, um, maybe they'll do another one. And you know that's that's kind of the trend. And that's a risk that you take. I don't. I, you know they 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 state that they're never going to make any more coins. Um, of course that's. Re remains to be seen i guess um maybe some of you guys who are deep into the slack that have more understanding than 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 i have about how the smart contract is set up can tell me whether or not any more coins could ever be made but they do say that they're not going to make any more i just don't know how how much i can trust that so that it is a consideration when you are deciding um how much you want to invest so and that's it guys uh, that's the end of part three of a four-part series on the overview of BAT, Basic Attention Token. Um, the ICO is May 31st, 2017. And if you guys want to hear all four parts, make sure you subscribe. Um, my videos are already uploaded for part one and two, but make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss number four. I'm King of Dew. May the force be with you. And until next time, guys, take it easy.